think one of the one of the things that helps me pick up clients is through my website I'm able to bring in leads and then I've got a system set up to where when the leads come in um, they start receiving emails every other day and these emails take them through the entire buyer process which is great for first time buyers because you know a lot of times they have no idea what's going on so um, you know, it starts with going through the approval process. It talks about the inspections, the appraisals, the escrow right. process, you know, pretty much everything that a buyer is going to face throughout the process. Um, they're going to be introduced to during that email series. On top of that, we put them on a property search to make sure that they're getting properties that meet their needs every day. You know what I mean? So anytime something hits the market, they're not going to miss it. Um, but what really makes a big difference is I've got a proven process that I've kind of honed over the last couple of years. It's become a really kind of consistent, repeatable process that's taken a lot of the stress off of buyers because it just streamlines everything. And mm -hmm. part of that is having a network of really good vendors, contractors. I've got a great inspector. I've got a, a great lender. Um, and, and having this team of folks who kind of have specializations in area, area sure. uh, to solve any problem that might come up has, has got a long way. Yeah. I mean, the, to me, like, the reason that's relevant is because, like, in the same thing, like, what I do... You know, I may offer um, a number of different services, you know what I mean? And most people look at that as like this finely tuned machine, but really it's just me having good relationships with other businesses in the community that I can outsource some of the work to, you know what I mean? Everything I do, I focus on quality. I'm sure it's the same with you. Definitely. But um, so I want to make sure that I have the most skilled person doing it, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to just be the only person in the wheelhouse, you know what I mean? Just so I can take credit for it. I actually want the consumer to be happy and I want the quality of the product to kind of speak for itself through the craftsmanship. For sure, for sure. And you spoke to the quality, you know what I mean? And we kind of have a motto around here that's, that speaks to service over sales. Um, and what's kind of known to be a sales industry, you know, very salesy industry in yeah. real estate. Um, we try to really keep the service side of it in mind and sure. try to make the buyer experience or the seller experience as smooth and seamless as possible because it's one of the most stressful experiences that people face. You know, it's probably the largest purchase that you're going to make over your lifetime, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, we want to make that as easy as possible. You know, if you were grateful for something, bro, like if there was something that you were grateful for, just today alone, it could be every day, but like, what are you great? What are you currently grateful for, man? Like, what are you? I mean, you know, the standard answer is obviously I'm really grateful for, for having a great family. You know, growing up, I was raised by, you know, my mom who took really, really good care of me and, and taught me the value of hard work. Um, yeah. Got two amazing kids, you know what I mean? I couldn't ask for more from either one of them. But the, the kind of surprise answer, um, I, I focus a lot on gratitude over failures, you know what I mean? Because sure. I put a lot of value on just acting and doing things in my life, you know what I mean? And it's not always going to work out, but a lot of people get stuck in that, that fear of failure or the, uh, that complacency, you know what I mean? Where uh -huh. they're just not sure how it's going to turn out so they never try. And uh, I've really tried to push past that, and so I've learned to kind of welcome failure, and, and I'm grateful for the lessons that come with that. It's nuts to think about... Um how the failure has offset the success, you know what I mean? For sure. Yeah, it all drives each other, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's throwing darts, right? You're going to miss a few before you before you find the bullseye. But, um, you know, I was fortunate with real estate. You know, I, like I said, I've, I've had a lot of jobs. I've worked in a lot of industries. Right. I've thrown a lot of darts. Together, um, a lot of jobs. Yeah, for sure. And when I landed in real estate, it was, it was different in a way that the people in my life, my friends, my family, they really, like, kind of came together and supported me, you know what I mean? So right off the bat, I've been blessed with a lot of success because of these people who right. you know have known me over the years, you know what I mean, but who just came to bat for me right away. So it's really been a blessing, and I'm just super grateful for the people in my life who've made that possible. Sure. I think so. I think, too, I think one of the reasons that real estate was probably such a hit for you is because you were always, like, somebody who was really, you know, you had a good reputation in the community, and people always knew you as being somebody that was willing to help out. Right. So I feel like people naturally came to you and just asked you asked you questions, like, about real estate. A lot of those people probably turned into future clients, but I know that I've been around and witnessed a lot of people just, just come to you just to get, you know, just a, just a little piece of advice, a little know-how, you know? Yeah, and I think there's a lot of value in that low-pressure, again, low-pressure service, um demeanor you know what i mean especially in such a salesy industry it goes a long way in building trust with people someone's thinking about buying right now what would you tell them we just had the elections come up you know what i mean you've seen the way that went what would you suggest to somebody who's thinking about buying right now so as far as the elections go it's hard to uh it's hard to try to guess what the market's going to do you know mm -hmm. even without the election it's hard to try to guess right if you sure. asked me back in march when coronavirus hit what the market was going to do over the next six to eight months i would not have guessed that it was going to do what it's done you know over the last six months, we've seen over 15% growth in home values in the sure. local area, and which is bananas. You know, I mean, we've seen like 6% traditionally per year. 
Um, and a lot of that is due to low inventory, and so that's creating some problems for buyers. You know what I mean? You've got fewer sellers who are listing their homes, but you've still got buyers qualified. Rates are great. So, you know, we're getting 15, 20 offers sometimes on properties when they hit the market. The last four listings that I listed went for ten to $20,000 over. So, Holy smokes. yeah, buyers are having a hard time right now, and people are getting frustrated. Some people are, you know, they're just deciding to wait because it's so tough, but it's important to work with your agent and have your agent work with the other agent to try to find out if there's any ways that you can, um, you know, sweeten the deal. Sometimes sellers need to stay in the home longer, you know what I mean? Sometimes they need a quicker escrow. Um, yeah, there's there's a dozen different ways, you know what I mean, that uh, that you can sweeten a deal for a seller. You know, real estate is less about selling physical property and actually about selling trust and yourself and like and, and and just developing, you know, like like you said, just developing a, a a resource portal for people to come to and kind of get knowledge and education about. Yeah, you know, it's twofold. I, I tell I got a couple agents that are working with me right now that I'm kind of have brought on over the last year, sure. and I tell them it's it's a two sided coin, right? It's this likability, you know what I mean. So the right. people who already know you and like you, like that's step one. But on top of that, they've got to be able to trust you and know that you're working to gain knowledge and that you know what I mean that you're right. going to be able to perform because again, this is one of the biggest investments that people are gonna gonna deal with in their life. And, you know, you might have a great friend, but you're not necessarily going to trust your great friend with, you know, hundreds of thousands sure. of dollars. So, sure. it's business. Um, yeah. I mean, the first thing that I tell my clients to do is to get with a lender. Um, and that's not necessarily to get pre-qualified. It's not because money is the most important thing, but the lender is going to be able to take a look at your credit score, take a look at your financial situation. And they're going to help you be able to build a game plan to get to the best loan program, best rates, you know, best overall situation for you and your needs. Sure. Um, and so if you start with the lender, you get that game plan. Then I'll lead them into now look at your budget and start thinking about what you can afford. You know, just because they've qualified you for $400,000 doesn't mean that that's what you need to spend. You know, it might not fit in with your budget. Once you've you know, gotten all that together, we get you on the property search and just start receiving properties. And I tell buyers, it's not a hurry. You know, I get people apologizing to me all the time because we'll go see six or seven properties, 15 properties, 20 properties. And I'm telling them, guys, take your time. You know what I mean? Because you're going to be in this house hopefully several years at least. Um, so it's worth seeing some properties. And, and if you have an agent that's rushing you through the process, that's you know, something to consider because you, know, you want to be able to make sure that you're making the best decision for your family. So if you had to give a first-time homebuyer uh, a lesson today, what would it be? Lesson number one would be meet with your lender. Uh, we start with the lender not because money is the most important thing and we're trying to push you or press you, but it's because the lender is going to have the best idea of where you stand now and they're in the best position to build a, a game plan for you going forward. You know what I mean? They're going to know what loan programs are available for you in, 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 with, within the houses that you're looking to purchase, uh, within your income, things like that. And they're going to be able to help you build that game plan to get there. Once you have that, once the lender tells you, hey, you're qualified up to X number of dollars, then you're going to take a look at your budget and you're going to see, you know, what kind of bills you've got, what kind of bills you expect in the future. Do you have kids going off to college? Are there, do you have a, a child that's going to be getting braces soon, like my daughter's getting braces right, right. now? So there's this cost that you're going to want to consider going forward, too. Just because you're pre-qualified up to $400,000 doesn't mean you have to spend $400,000. Once we've got that down, we'll build your buyer criteria, start sending you properties, and then I tell buyers, view as many properties as you can. You know what I mean? If you have an agent who's pressuring you to move fast, they only want to show you five or six properties, you might want to think about you know, expanding your horizons a little bit because this is one of the biggest purchases of your life. You know what I mean? And you don't want to rush through it. You don't want to end up in a house that doesn't meet your family's needs. From there, you're going to get into the offer process, which right now is a little bit, little bit hairy, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. we really don't have enough listings on the market for all the buyers that are looking. So sure. contingent offers have been very, very hard-pressed to get through. We're seeing offers being accepted $10,000, $20,000 over asking price. Some people are waiving the appraisal just to get through. It's, it's nuts, you know what I mean? And when there's low inventory, this is the kind of things that you see with supply and demand, you know what I mean? So. Sure. Make sure that your agent is talking with the other agent about those finer points that they can tweak, um, you know, when you're writing your offer. And then from there, it's the escrow process, which is, uh, you know, kind of streamlined all in itself. But uh, gotcha. it's, it's a whole different conversation. How do you overcome obstacles within the industry when you're trying to complete a transaction and run into a roadblock? What do you do? So I come from project management, um, and real estate kind of operates similarly in that you can't predict all the problems that are going to come. You kind of just have to be flexible. Um, and, and try to plan some sort of resources for that. Uh, a lot of the times we can just throw a little bit of money at it. You know what I mean? If it's yeah. a repair that you know the buyer and seller don't want to agree on or something like that, you know sometimes the agents can come together and, and make that work. 
Uh, but really it comes down to having a really good network of professionals. Um, you know, I've got a great pool guy, the great lender. I've got a contractor who can do, you know, electrical, roofing, plumbing. We've got a help. landscaper, a carpet. I mean, from top to bottom, we've got all the vendors and contractors that we need for any problem that can arise. You know what I mean? And that's kind of been the biggest differentiator for my conversion rate over the years. You know, typically real estate has about a 50% escrow, you know, conversion rate, you know, 50% close, 50% fall out. And I'm over 80% simply because nice. I focus on just solving problems as they come up and not so much on, you know, being the best negotiator all the time or having the biggest ego. You know what I mean? It's, sure. it's, it's about making the deal work for everybody. So a hack or tool that you really like right now that you use for buyers, go. My favorite hack, well, my favorite tool that I use for buyers sure. right now is the property search on our website. So it's updated every 10 minutes from the MLS. So it gives our buyers access to the MLS, the same properties that agents are seeing. Right. Uh, but more importantly, it can get real detailed into the criteria that you're looking for, how many bedrooms, what your price range is, what your location is. I can draw that out on a map. Uh, I can get into whether it has a shop or not, the size of the lot, the pool. I mean, it goes into so much depth as far as what you're looking for that it helps us make sure that you're getting the properties regularly that you're looking for. Because it works so quickly, too, you're not missing anything. The second something hits the MLS, you're going to get an email notifying you that something that meets your needs is on. And especially in a market like this where inventory is so low and that you don't really have time to waste because homes are disappearing within the first weekend, it's critical to be getting those properties right away. And what's cool for me too with this tool is it allows me to track what properties you're looking at, what properties you save, and what properties you want to view. You know what I mean? So other than texting me all these properties you're looking at, I can just go back and look when you refer to it. That's something that I think a lot of people like to know is how do you start your day? What's your morning routine? You know, I'm constantly shaping it and changing it. Um, right now, I get up pretty early. I get up before the sun does. Sure. Uh, i got to try to beat the kids. I get out. I get about a 45-minute walk-in where I'm usually listening to something either motivational or listening to an audio book on Audible. Um, I like to get that 45 minutes of kind of mindset work in. I'll come back. I'll do a 45-minute workout uh, where I'm usually lifting. You know what I mean? Sometimes there's a little bit of cardio involved, but typically not. Um, and then I'll do 15 minutes minimum of meditation, you know what I mean? And for me, obviously, that's just ultimately quiet silence time where I'm trying not to move, think. You know what I mean? It's just it's the stillness that we really don't get too much during the day. Sure. Uh, I try to get it in the morning. Uh, it kind of sets the tone for the day. And from there, it's wake up the kids, get them ready for school, and at this point, plug them into the computer because they're not going to school. Right.